to UD YouTube channel. We are running a series of interviews with Chief Information Security Officers, CISA officers. Stay with us and you will get a little information about the future of technology, innovations, budgeting, cybersecurity market demand, and people management. Our first speaker is Matthew from company Batson, that is biggest in Sweden and Europe. Excited? Let's get started. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Nazar. Um, you're welcome to our uh, YouTube channel of Under Defense. I thank you for your time today, and sure. um, we really appreciate uh, that you uh, decided to um, answer some of our questions. Sure. Um, we really respect you as a very experienced CISO. Um, uh, I'd be also happy if you can share with uh, our viewers uh, some of your background. Yes, sure. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, your experience and so on so far and I have a few questions I, I'd really ask you as a CISO uh, that I believe it will be useful for uh, other people in Ukraine and uh, in the EU like to as a experience starting from top CISO we work with. Definitely. So um, I'm Matthew, I'm the Director of Information Security at Betson Group. Betson Group is one of the largest iGaming companies um, um, that exists right now. Uh, we have multiple brands and uh, since we have multiple brands, we have multiple jurisdictions as well. So uh, we have to conform by, you know, several different jurisdictions and uh, we have to ensure that, you know, our um, uh, PII data, our personal identifiable information is secure. Um, also, we have to adhere by other frameworks. Um, uh, one of them is PCI DSS and the other one would be ISO 27001. Um, uh, information security is something which is a passion of mine. It is something which, um, uh, you know, it's exciting in itself. And it is also exciting because it brings value towards um, an organization. When I say value, um, it's because I see information security more as, you know, um, uh, what is the risk appetite of that company? You know, how can we, um, uh, uh, you know, the a company cannot um, have a decision if whether um, uh, you know to do something or not if it doesn't know what the risks are and uh, whether it's something which we can mitigate that particular risk mm -hmm. so information security in itself is if I had to actually explain it in a nutshell is more kind of you know um, uh, how what kind of risks is the company able to take um, uh, and that is basically my job and it's something which has been of interest of mine since the past uh, 12 years, I would say. I also know you as a very like, hands-on guy as well. Uh, yes. I remember you used to work at so, like top consulting companies uh, yes. on Malta. Yeah, so um, I was a pen tester for um, uh, you know, one of the top five um, uh, you know, um, firms such as you know, PwC, etc. Um, uh, I was also um, um, a tutor, where I used to teach certified ethical hacking. So I was a, a certified, certical, certified ethical instructor. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, for me, security from an operational level, that's how it all started, you know. It was something which gave me some, some interest on, uh, you know, um, uh, how to... It was always a, an interest of mine to understand how these things actually work. Yeah. And then it obviously moved on, you know. Um, uh, it started off as uh, then from a governance perspective, I had introduced ISO 27001 in my previous firm. Um, I was the ISMS manager for six whole years. And uh, then obviously, you know, things kind of, you know, um, took their toll and I started. Um, uh, I'm now a director of information security at Betson Group. Nice. Thank you. Uh, what about challenges you're facing right now? And uh, you like, you believe other CISOs can have the same challenges? Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest challenge a CISO would have is uh, buying from the company. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that is the biggest um, challenge one would have because if the company sees um, uh, information security as an insurance kind of thing, mm -hmm. then uh, you will have a lot of challenges over there because you know they do not value infosec from that uh, from that angle. However, if um, uh, information security, the company sees it as an enabler sort of like, you know, it is a way on how they can take calculated risks, then it is something which it is exhilarating in itself because um, uh, you can actually provide value towards the organization. 
So I think that will be the topmost uh, challenge for a CISO. And that is basically what would make you like, you know, going home happy or not. Because if you have the executives who don't really care about the security um, angle, then obviously you're, you're just there just to pick off um, policies and procedures and to adhere with with uh, legislations and that's it. Yeah, people people don't like to follow just the policies and procedures. Exactly. Like, but until they realize that this is a, like, there is like, no, you know, an interesting joke, um, a joke, a true story. Um, I, I spoke with um, a friend of mine uh, recently um, here in Sweden and um, like asking about how things going in Sweden, so why people uh, how security is here? Are people buying or not? Why not buying and so on and so far? He told me that you know in Sweden, um, security is not so popular. Why? Because people believe that uh, like Sweden is a very natural country, and there is um, no one have to attack them. So they are not in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. They are not in US. Mm-hmm. So US have enemies like Russia and China mm-hmm. and yeah, some others. Yeah. Uh, so they are not jobs, they do not like hurt anyone, so mm-hmm. it, should, it should be fine. And mm-hmm. uh, they do not realize that actually they are living not in Sweden, they are yeah. living in the internet. Exactly, exactly. And that is something which obviously um, uh, they are only seeing at face value. Because um, uh, the internet is not Sweden or the UK or, yeah. or anywhere. Yeah. You know? um, uh, wherever there is money involved and wherever there is um, sabotage involved or you know, even a simple defacement of your website. I mean, how much does it cost the company if all of a sudden your website is pointing to your um, uh, competitor? You know, yeah. and that is that is basically how to how to absorb that risk and see how to mitigate it. You know, and that is what people don't understand. Sometimes, unfortunately, these companies, it is when uh, when uh, the problem is really there when they realize you know that security is important. You know, and uh, that is something which which we do not have at Betson because we believe that security is an enabler. And that is why, to me, you know, this is a really, really good place where to work because I go home and I feel that like I accomplished things. Nice, nice. Uh, one of the interesting challenges you mentioned, it's uh, about, um, you know, for, for young CISOs, for people who become CISOs, it's, you know, to get a um, approvals to get a budget from um, like top management. So how do you approach uh, like your management yes. so, with budget questions? So essentially, <clears throat> what I usually do and I find that really work is that I first look at the company statement. Mm-hmm. So the company statement has to reflect with your um, uh, information security strategy. You know, so if the company statement is that it wants their customers to be happy, mm-hmm. then how can information security provide value in making customers happy? So from then on, you will have a three-year strategy. I like to call it the North Star, where you actually Mm -hmm. focus on that North Star, and then you have key initiatives to arrive to that North Star. Um, uh, And that is how I I make things work. And uh, the most important thing is you don't ever go to um, an executive team and tell them problems, you go there with solutions. Nice. What happens is that, you know, they have problems from a business perspective. You don't go there and give them a problem. You go there with solutions and value so that they can drive the business further. And that is simple because that is how you can bring value towards the organization. Uh, Cool. Another question I have. um it's about people, it's about hiring people. Uh, so how are you are searching for, for like new people? What qualities a uh, good security engineer you have to add? Uh, I, I, I can be really honest with you. I rather <laughs> have someone who is still learning, but can integrate within the culture of the company. For me personally, I feel that um, uh, being, you know, understanding the culture of the company and having that person fit in the culture of the company is really important because um, uh, that is what what drives that person. That is how he can learn because he's he will be part of that culture and he can, uh, you know, step up and and provide more value. 
Um, uh, so if I had to choose between someone who's very technical and someone who's a people person and a bit less technical, I would go for the latter. Um, uh, but the way the way I look for is that it's all about strategy, right? So I I, I tend to use a, an eighty twenty rule where mm-hmm. someone is focused on governance, but perhaps is giving twenty percent. Um, on operation security mm-hmm. then I have someone who's doing 80% operation security and then focusing on 20% governance and like that we're making sure that um, um, you know something which I believe as well is that people do not leave the company but people leave their managers, managers yeah, and people. I believe that I've mentioned this to you as well and uh, you are accountable for those people when they leave because it means that you were not successful in keeping that person and uh, I make sure that you know, um, the way I try to see it is that I try to make myself redundant in the sense that, you know, um, I, I try to teach and advocate and be a leader in, in my team enough that kind of if I am not there, mm-hmm. you know, um, things are, are going on just the same as I am there. Um, and that is how I go home and kind of, kind of feel that I have managed because um, uh, sort of like, you know, it's important to understand as well that you know you don't see things from a technical perspective as well you have to see things from a business perspective as well and sometimes you need to kind of rise and see things from a helicopter view so that you can see what the company really needs not what you really need yeah that's true you know i also make uh, mistakes uh, in working with people uh, in the same way as you described so uh, and it's also about always about the north star yeah. So even from a people perspective, you know, is there a career path for that person? You know, um, are you making sure that what he's doing, he's enjoying? You know, and this is something which I ask, you know, what do you like to do? Is it operation security or is it governance or is it both? What if you can, you know, provides a exact, exact interest to, to the person, you know, that he wants this one, but you can provide this one to... Yes. So, so essentially, um, what I would do is that, in my case, I'm lucky currently because when I employ people, I make sure that, you know, if I need operation security, I look for that kind of yeah, yeah. interest. But if that's the case, then, and uh, let's say I, I'm just plugged in and uh, I don't have anyone in operational security and they're all doing governance, then uh, it might be a little bit of a problem because, you, you know, um, uh, you, you would need to somehow, instead of using the 80-20 rule, there's to be like a 50-50 rule, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and maybe then start, um, you know, employ someone to do operational security and, you know, um, uh, take it from there. Uh, cool. Um, one more question is, you know, uh, overall, on, on how do you see Europe market and demand on cybersecurity engineers? And uh, I think it's on the rise. Mm-hmm. I think it's on the rise um, because... <laughs> I think, I mean, information security has been here for ages, Yeah. you know, um, but um, uh, with, the, with the start of GDPR, sort of like people now and companies have realized somehow that, you know, InfoSec could be a pillar in the organization as mm-hmm. well. And uh, it is something which it will definitely increase, you know, and uh, uh, cybersecurity especially is something which um, is of real importance, you know, um, making sure that Client data is safe. Um, and this is something which we kind of, you know, advocate all the time. I mean, companies, let's face it, you know, their biggest asset is the data. And, uh, you know, having data, having, a, you know, uh, data of someone, it is extremely important. Um, to it's ensure, responsibility. Exactly. Making sure that you're doing your utmost to, to ensure that that data is kept safe. Cool. Uh, a quick question about uh, you know security monitoring, uh, you know having it or do not having investing it in, or not investing in, into it. So, what shall a maturity level they should have and uh, uh, to to start actual setting a security monitoring in place? Well, security monitoring. <laughs> I mean, without security monitoring, how can you detect threats, right? Yep. So. Um, uh, whether you're using so if, if you buy an antivirus software like mm. it's already doing some kind of automated security monitoring for you yeah but um uh, this it's a big difference i mean it there's nothing like i believe that there's nothing like having you know analysts in place looking at the data correlating that data 
to understand whether it's a false positive or if it's indeed a threat. You know, um, uh, I mean, we do have you know systems in place that does AI, you know, um, mm -hmm. and and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, human interaction is extremely important. And uh, fine, AI is getting better and better. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, nowadays, even you mentioned that, you know antivirus. You know, there's a conventional antivirus solutions, and now there's you know. This the sandbox um, AI antivirus software as well. Um, uh, yeah, they're all good tools, but they're tools. Um, at the end of the day, it is the human mind which which beholds with anything else. I believe. Anyways. All right, um, that's all I have for, us for now. Matthew, thank you very much for very uh, for the speech. Thank you, and, and uh, uh, hope we'll meet next time in Vegas. Yeah, uh, for sure, no, for sure. For yeah, Spawn.com. <laughs> Or as you know, um, I'm from a gambling company, so perhaps we could, you know, play uh, play poker or something. <laughs> or or conduct a contest for some company. Why not Caesar's Palace? Yeah, that should be good. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. -bye.